Hello everyone and welcome to Bronte Mania. In this video I'm going to discuss the life of Patrick Bronte, the head of the household. I'd like first to look at his um, early life which relates to him as a young man. When he moved over from Ireland to England to enrol in St John's College, Cambridge, which is a very famous co college. And when he enrolled in this college, he did so in order to gain a theological degree as he wished to enter into the church. But in order to do so, he had to gain a proficiency in the ancient languages of Greek and Latin. At the end of his four-year course, which began in 1802 and concluded in 1806, he left with his having graduated. And from there, he moved to... Um, Hart's head. He actually gained a position there. He was there from 1810 to 1815. He was working as an assistant curate in Hart's head. And while he was there in 1812, he met the love of his life, which was Maria Branwell. Um, they met in July 1812, and it was something of a whirlwind romance because they are actually married in on December the 29th, 1812. Um, there is actually a poem Bram, um, Patrick wrote, which um, I'd like to refer to now. It was actually a poem he wrote on her birthday, expressing his undying love for her. And it goes like this. Maria, let us walk and breathe the morning air and hear the cuckoo sing and every tuneful bird that woos the gentle spring throughout the budding grove. Softly coos the turtle dove, the primrose pale perfumes the gale, the modest daisy and the violet blue, inviting spread their charms for you. How much enhanced is all this bliss to me, since it is shared in mutual joy with thee. Yes, Patrick was also, always had a fondness for poetry, and that comes out in those lines, and also his deep affection for his future wife. And having um, married in, um, as I say, in December 29, 1812, um, they set up home in Hart's Head, and then, and they, they had two uh, children that were born while they were there, um, there was the eldest children, um, Elizabeth and Maria, and then Patrick was given a, um opportunity to advance in the church when he moved with his family in 1815 to Thornton where he became a pe perpetual curate, which involved an increase in his income, which is always handy. And um, while he was there, three more children were born, which was um, Charlotte, Branwell and Emily. And then in, 18, in April 1820, the family moved to Haworth, where um, Patrick had been given the position of church minister in Haworth, um, so they moved there in 1820, but sadly in 1821, um, Maria contracted cancer and died, which is very sad. And then, um, because of the, he, had, he had six children to bring up on his own, he tried to remarry, but all efforts in this direction failed. Uh, but he was helped out by Elizabeth Branwell, who was um, Maria's sister, who moved in with the family and remained with them until she died in 1842, and she was much loved, and she acted partly as housekeeper, and she performed a very useful role there. I think um, posterity has been very unkind to Patrick, because he is ten tends to be portrayed as a austere man, perhaps aloof, rather cold, but that's not really my perception of him, I think that's very false. Um, I'd like to read out from, as I've done in one or two other videos on this channel, 
from my book on Anne Bronte. It's on the life of Anne Bronte. This tape from her perspective. So this is what I'm going to read out now is from that book. And it is involves Anne returning to um, touch on a subject with her father, which she'd previously touched on on her 19th birthday, having passed her 19th birthday, which was she wanted to seek out a governor's position for herself, would be her first governor's post. But uh, Patrick was a bit sceptical about it and told her to come back later in a little, maybe a few weeks, a few months, and they would discuss the matter again. And this is what happens in, in this second discussion. Papa, I told him, I spoke to you some weeks hence of a desire to become a governess. Do you remember it? Remember it? There was a hint of levity on his face as he looked at me. Of course I remember it. How could I not when you gave notice of your intent to leave home to take on such an arduous vocation? Arduous, I asked him. Yes, it will be hard work taking on the duties of a governess and the responsibilities which goes into this position. He looked at me warily before continuing in a similar strain. If you truly have looked into this matter as you should, you will realise the truth behind my words. But I do wonder if this is the case, or if it is merely an example of a light-hearted girl dreaming of a of something which is quite out with her capabilities. Bless me, Patrick, admonished on as she turned a withering glance in his direction. You are hardly being fair on Anne with such a harsh assessment of what may or may not be lying in wait for her when she finally takes her first steps into the unknown. Fairness and play no part in my views on the matter, Papa was quick to reply. It is my duty as Anne's father to ensure she is ready to fulfil this undertaking she has set her heart upon. Papa was quite correct, of course. This was yet another indication of that side of his character which outsiders took amiss. In so doing, they attributed negative aspects to his personality which did not exist. I refer to his perceived stiffness of manner, his seeming sternness. This was only in the eyes of the beholder, and one too who had made no conscious effort to unearth the notion the motives behind Papa's demeanour. I'd like to share with you um, an actual photograph um, of Patrick Bronte in his later years. And also a picture of Howarth Church, where he was church minister for so many years. I actually visited Howarth in 2001 with my father, my own father, and it was um, quite a amazing experience to walk in the footsteps of this great family and I actually entered the church as well as I've just shown you there and yeah that was a very good experience. Um, going back to Patrick's um, classical background about um, learning Greek and Latin when I was at St John's College that came in handy later on and actually the um, education of one of his children which was Branwell who studied at home with Patrick and he gained a solid grounding in classical languages and his father was excellent at passing that knowledge to him. Another great feature of Patrick is that he allowed his children from a young age um, to have access to a wealth of books which I think played a key role in future successes of his three famous daughters, Charlotte, Emily and Anne, who became um, great writers themselves and who uh, now in novels are acknowledges, acknowledged as great works in the English language. Um, 
Well, that's all for now. Um, thanks very much for tuning in once again to Bronte Mania. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I look forward to sharing more of my insights into the Brontes very soon.